Your credit score is an important financial number. Lenders use your credit score to evaluate your credit worthiness when you apply for loans, mortgages, even when you try to apply for a new apartment. A high credit score typically translates to lower interest rates, better loan terms, higher credit limits, and an increased chance of approval. All of this helps you save money and gain greater financial flexibility. Plus, landlords, insurance companies, and even employers may use your credit score to assess your financial reliability and trustworthiness. If you're watching this, I'm guessing that your credit score isn't as high as you would like it to be. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Hey, I'm Lorianne, I'm the co-founder of Dow Jane's and a money coach, and today I'm gonna give you seven tips on how to raise your credit score over the next 30 days. But first, I wanna make sure you don't miss any of the upcoming videos because we publish new videos to help you master your money every single Monday. So go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss those. All right, how to raise your credit score in 30 days. Number one, set up auto payment. Of the five factors that your credit score is based on, payment history has the biggest impact on your credit score. Payment history refers to your record of past payments on credit accounts. Basically, it lets creditors know whether you have made payments on time, missed any payments, or defaulted on any of your accounts. Consistently making on-time payments positively impacts your credit score, while late payments, defaults, or collections negatively impacts your credit score. So always, always, always pay at least the minimum balance. Don't ever miss a payment or be late on a payment. To make this easy, put your bills on autopilot and set up automatic payments to make sure you never miss a due date. Number two, pay off your credit card throughout the month. The second most important factor in calculating your credit score is called credit utilization. So of the five factors that determine your credit score, the first one we just talked about, payment history and credit utilization together, make up 65% of your score. This is majority of your score. So what is credit utilization? This is the ratio of your credit balances to your credit limits. It's a measure of how much of your available credit you are using. A good credit utilization ratio never exceeds 30%, and the lower it is, the better. Because a high utilization ratio suggests potential financial strain or an over-reliance on credit, and is a predictor of how well you might be able to pay your future credit balances. So if you have a credit limit of $10,000, you should never use more than $3,000 at a time. So if you have to put a big expense on your card, go ahead and make a payment, even a partial payment, quickly so that your credit utilization doesn't end up digging your credit score. You don't have to wait until your bill is due to make a payment, pay early. This helps keep your credit utilization low throughout the billing cycle and will help improve your credit score. Plus, paying early ensures that you're also paying on time, which boosts your payment history score. Number three, request a higher credit limit. This might seem a little counterintuitive, but one way to improve that credit utilization ratio and thus improve your credit score is to actually ask for a higher credit limit. Let me explain. Let's say you have cart A, which has a limit of $6,000 and cart B, which has a limit of $4,000. So add those two together, your total available credit is $10,000. This is the denominator in calculating your credit utilization ratio. And you want that credit utilization to stay below 30%, which would mean not using more than $3,000 total. So you wouldn't want to spend more than $1,800 on card A or $1,200 on card B so that your utilization stays below 30% on each card individually and overall. Now, if you were able to increase your available credit and not use it, meaning don't go spend more because you have a higher credit limit, you can instantly improve your credit score. Let's say that you call up card B, which currently has a credit limit of $4,000, and ask if they can increase your credit limit, and they agree to increase it to $6,000. Now, your credit utilization ratio has actually gone down. You have a total of $3,000 of credit debt being used, divided by a denominator of a total of $12,000. So you went from 30% credit utilization to 25% credit utilization without a lot of work. Now, depending on your lender, they may do a hard pull on your credit to determine if they're going to increase your credit limit or not. 
You can ask them in advance if this is what they will do in order to help determine if they can increase your credit limit. They may be able to just do a soft pull based on your own payment history with them. When they do a hard pull, this actually sends a little ding to your credit report, and it'll usually result in lowering your credit score by five to 10 points temporarily, but it will increase your credit score over the long run because you've improved that credit utilization ratio. So depending on like how you may need to use your credit score in the near future, you may want to hold off if they're going to do a hard pull and you know you're like applying for a new apartment in the same month, for example. But if you don't actually need your credit score for any financing purposes in the near future, this can be a good long-term strategy. However, it's very important to note that this strategy does not work if your credit balance grows along with your credit limit. So do not use this strategy if you know you're gonna be tempted to max out your cards when you have more credit limit available. Right? You have to increase that ratio by holding constant or lowering the balance and increasing the available amount. Number four, become an authorized user. If you have a friend or a relative with a high credit limit and a history of on-time payments, ask if they're willing to add you to their account as an authorized user. The account holder doesn't even have to let you actually use the card or even give you the account number for this to have a positive impact on your credit score. Number five, ask for late payment forgiveness. Like I said, 35% of your credit score depends on paying on time and a missed payment can affect your credit score for up to seven years. So if for some reason you slip up and miss a payment deadline, pick up the phone and call your issuer ASAP and definitely within 30 days, which is the deadline for most lenders. When you call, you want to have the funds available and be ready to handle things when you ask the rep not to report you to the credit bureaus. Right, let them know I can make the payment right now today. I will not miss another payment. And this is likely to only work once or twice. So do set up safeguards like auto pay and reminders to make sure that you do not miss another payment. This is a last resort, not a safety net. Number six, review your credit report and dispute inaccurate information. It's pretty common for there to be mistakes on people's credit reports. Some mistakes are simple, like a misspelled name or an address. Sometimes they're big. Sometimes you might get your credit report and it's actually like there are things on there that are not even yours. They belong to someone else who has the same name as you. So you want to be sure that what's being reported on your credit score is accurate to you. Some of the more costly errors that are common are things like accounts that were incorrectly reported late or delinquent, debts that were listed twice, closed accounts that are reported as actually still being open, or accounts with an incorrect balance or credit limit. Federal law allows you to dispute inaccurate information on your credit report, and there is no fee for filing a dispute. You can submit your dispute to the business who provided the information to the credit reporting company and to the credit reporting company that included the misinformation on your report. The Federal Trades Commission's website has information about how to dispute these errors on your credit reports, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's website provides additional guidance on disputing information on credit reports. I'll leave links to both in the description. Number seven, add utility and phone payments to your credit report. Typically payments such as utility and cell phone bills won't be reported to the credit bureaus unless you default on them. But Experian, one of the three major credit bureaus offers a free online tool called Experian Boost, which is designed to help people with low credit scores or thin credit files build up credit history. What this tool does is allow you to get credit for paying your utilities or paying your phone bill or even your Netflix subscription on time. One thing to keep in mind is that Experian Boost will improve your credit score generated from Experian data. But if the lender is looking at your score generated from Equifax or TransUnion, the two other major credit bureaus, the additional sources of payment history won't count. So it depends on which credit bureau the lender is looking at to determine your credit score. But still, it's free and it's easy to set up, so why not? Final thoughts, if you want to improve your credit score fast, these tips will really help. And if you want to learn more about how to master your money using a three-step system we have taught to thousands of women to create a better financial future, be sure to check out our free masterclass, which I will leave a link to in the description.